All right, let's talk about supplements. We've been talking about phosphocreatine for a while. I mean, normally people ask the question, well, what about creatine supplementation? You might have seen somebody in the gym doing this, taking creatine, saying that it'll help them get stronger. Uh, you might have gone down to the local supplement store and they recommended it. Uh, creatine is one of the supplements that has the best evidence for it actually being useful in certain scenarios. Uh, it's, it's pretty well studied. And the rationale behind it has to do with the creatine phosphate system. So let's think about what causes the creatine phosphate system to slow down. All right, so this is a diagram of how much power you can generate uh, during a maximal effort. So if you just go and sprint as fast as possible, uh, what's going to happen is that you'll start off really fast and then your speed will slowly go down until you hit kind of this steady speed. So that, that initial sprint, like with your first 100, 200 meters, is going to be primarily fueled by the phosphocreatine system. Now, wouldn't it be nice if you didn't have to slow down, if you could just keep on using that phosphocreatine system so you could run ridiculously fast, you could run the same pace as your 100 meters, your 100 meter sprint for the whole 400 meters or 800 meters. That would be amazing. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't seem like you can really do that. But let's identify why do you slow down? Why does the phosphocreatine system get exhausted in like the first 20, 30, 40 seconds? Uh, the reason really comes down to you're running out of phosphocreatine. You've just used it all and it doesn't recharge automatically. It takes a while to recharge. So you've gone through your stores. So now the idea with the creatine supplement is perhaps by taking in more creatine, we can increase the creatine stores and phosphocreatine stores in the muscle. And instead of having our speed go down like this, now maybe we can go a little bit longer at a fast speed by having more phosphocreatine in the pool. So that's the rationale for it, but does it work? So several studies have been done, uh, it seems like, hundreds, if not thousands, have been done. But one of the first to look at it was by Harris in 1993. And they supplemented creatine uh, by having people take several grams of grams per kilogram of creatine every day for about five days. And they looked at how the creatine content in the muscle changed. Now, total creatine content means phosphorylated creatine, so phosphocreatine and normal creatine. So if you just got creatine into the muscle, that really wouldn't do you a whole lot of good deal because you want the phosphocreatine for those explosive movements, right? So here they, they measured the total, total creatine and it kind of, this is what happened. So these are the subjects that were supplemented. So subject five started off with a phosphocreatine level somewhere around here and it increased up to about 150 nanomoles per kilogram. And so you can see by supplementing for like these five days or so, uh, what was it, 10 days? Oh, some were seven, some were 10 it's all over the place, uh, you can see that creatine levels, total creatine are going up. So this is, this is really cool news that if just by taking in dietary creatine, you can increase the amount in your muscle. But the, it's, there's a ceiling on how much you can increase the amount. First off, it, it seems very variable for from person to person. And uh, once you go up, it, it, it doesn't seem like you can go up a whole lot more. So a lot of creatine regimens will have you take in creatine in a heavy bolus for like the first five days, and then have you taper down to like a maintenance dose for the rest of the time. And, and the idea here is that you're only going to absorb so much. You're going to max out how much extra creatine you can take into your muscle. And then any extra that you take beyond the maintenance dose is just going to go out in your urine. So let's see, what else do I want to bring up here? Uh, it's important to recognize that the creatine supplement on average can increase your muscle creatine stores so around 20%. This is total creatine. So about half of that will be phosphocreatine and half will be normal creatine. And that's going to vary from person to person. So, all right, so you can get it into the muscle, but does that actually impact performance? And 
it can. It can be beneficial for, for certain things. And where you see a lot of benefit or most common benefits, this is strength training and muscles, muscle strength, muscle hypertrophy. So here's an example from a study in 2011 or 2001, where they had some older men, 70 year old men do strength training with or without a creatine supplement. And this is the maximum leg press. So like leg strength that they could do in the two groups. And you can see strength training for several weeks increased the strength of both groups, but the group that was taking the creatine supplement as opposed to the placebo saw larger gains in strength. And similarly, the creatine supplement group saw a larger gain in muscle mass or lean mass change. Both groups went up. Training, strength training is always going to be good and it's going to increase your mass and your strength. But the group that was supplementing the creatine was able to get a bigger increase in strength and mass. So what is the hypothesized mechanism of this? If you have extra creatine, phosphocreatine in the muscle, it probably will help you do increased repetitions at a heavy load. So instead of doing your, your, I don't know, instead of doing 10 repetitions for your, your sets, each set, you might be able to get out 12 and put more volume, uh, a heavier volume or more volume on that muscle at a greater overload stimulus. That's the idea. That's, that's kind of what current thought is about how the creatine can help you gain strength and muscle mass. Um, the impact of creatine on, on like sprint performance or a single bout, like your one rep max or uh, like a hundred meter dash is a little more equivocal. It's hit and miss. And, and part of the reason for that is that along with the extra creatine that you store in the muscle, you also store extra fluid or extra water. And so that's, that's actually going to increase the mass that you have to carry down the track if you're running. So think about it. If you, if you want to go as fast as possible, you want to be, have as much muscle and as little amount of water and fluid and, and mass, uh, ex, a non-necessary, unnecessary mass as possible. So if you're a sprinter and you're supplementing creatine, it, it could increase how much water you're carrying. And that means you have to carry more mass down the track and that could negate the benefit of having that extra creatine. So there's a really good paper that I recommend that you read if you have more questions about this by Kent Salin uh, in Sports Medicine in 2014. I encourage you to look it up and it talks a lot about uh, strategies for supplementing creatine and other things. It's a really good paper, so you should check it out if you have more questions.